Welcome back to Quantum Boredom. So, uh, yeah, back to the video game part of the actual video yeah, game. It's Leaves. not boring you, it's Leaves, come on. infuriating you with all the lack of effort in all the wrong places. Yeah, you, you can look at them and observe them. Alright, let me explain this. This is a Chronon source. What is Chronon? Chronon is the the, the, the the fancy name that Sam Lake gave to the time energy of this game. Uh, you know, I know it's a minor pet peeve, but wouldn't it make sense to actually, you know, tell us the name of these things before giving us the name? I mean, I mean, doesn't that kind of just spoil what they did. we're going to They told us there in the, um, in, the in the tutorial message. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. I'm talking about I think he story. means in dialogue. Oh, yeah. in dialogue. In story and dialogue. Because, like, well, I mean, like, well, I assume that this is something that's actually going to become a plot point. Well, Cronon well, is mentioned by Will. At some points, but the actual Chronon source aspects, no, those are just gameplay related stuff. They never mention that the Chronon sources in the actual story. It's too bad. It's, the been I to, by Will, uh, it's it's too bad. It's too bad. The story's in dialogue. <laughs> anyway, I guess, I guess you use those things to power up yourself. Huh? Uh, yes. Basically, this is the upgrade system. Uh, each Chronon source is actually an upgrade point, and you can buy all these upgrades to your time powers. Oh, and by the way, there's audio logs. Oh, so that, yeah, I was wondering what all the different names were before. Here's the problem. Unlike with most games that use dialogues, like Phantom Pain and Bioshock and the like, you cannot listen to the audio logs while you're playing. You're just supposed to stand here like a moron and listen to an actor drawn out in a monotone voice. And there's not, even, there's not even any subtitles. Seriously. Because it's not like we could actually have a third-person model of a person moving while the audio logs going on. Oh, wait, no, Arkham Knight did that as early practically as... Every oh. pra practically every AAA game out there does that. I can I can barely hear what they're saying. I know, right? <laughs> Heck, and without subtitles. I think, I think there have even been PS2 games that have been able to do that. I don't understand you, Sam. What happened? Again, again, again. This is a really special case. It's like, well, this is a game that has a lot of innovation in some areas, but then is completely creatively bankrupt in others, especially where it counts the most. It's a game that has high-tech visuals in a lot of places, being part of a next-gen console, yet does stuff that past-gen consoles have been able to do better. Yeah. It's like, this game is... <sighs> Polarizing isn't the Backwards. right word. It's like, oh, this game is like on two opposite ends when it really doesn't need to be. Hey, little finger, could you please act like you give a shit? If you don't also, mind. Also, no subtitles, seriously, for the audio log. You could have also given us something more interesting to look at. I mean, like, what, what is like, this? This looks like a screensaver. Still, even still images would have been fine. Yeah, you know, for compare. So yeah, I'm not gonna bother with these audio logs because there's so many of them and they're all so boring. So and nothing of value was lost. And you're just looking at a screensaver. Like seriously, again, even Arkham Asylum, should you actually choose to, you know, not move while listening to the audio logs, they actually give you an image of artwork to look at while the audio logs are. Oh, going. oh that's right. There you go. You know how William has barely any screen time in the in the actual story. You're supposed to listen to his audio logs to get a better sense of his character. I'm guessing. Yeah, all four of them compared to the other characters. Okay, Sam. Okay, if I if in order to properly understand the characters' motivations and backstories, I need to just stop playing the game and just listen to shit. You have failed as a storyteller. I mean, or at least in the video game department, if you're really that obsessed to make a radio radio drama of this. Or maybe do the smart thing and actually include some of the stuff in the actual story. It, it, it's probably, again, it goes back to the rush development. I, my guess is this was all probably supposed to be told in cutscenes, but considering the rush development, they just have to dump all of this on audio logs. So here's what I have to ask. And trust me, it's not just audio logs. There's also going to be a shit ton of walls of text for us to read. You know, for the people who play tested this, I really have to ask... How could they have reported that this is interesting? Like, okay, okay, okay. Even if you are invested in the story, you don't really have much to look at here. You have to just stick around 
And again, there's no subtitles, so if you accidentally miss something, you have to pretty much go back and re-listen. And you cannot rewind anything. If you fail something, you have to start the other log from the beginning. Wait, 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 wait. How do you fail an audio log? No, 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 I mean, it, no, what I mean is, Joe, like you said, if you miss something, like if you, if, if there's some kind of line that you miss under, that you don't understand, you didn't quite get that, you cannot just rewind a couple seconds back. You have to start the other log from the beginning and just wait till the other log gets to that part where you were. Is it possible it to that, accidentally skip one happens. of these two by pressing a button? Uh, yeah, if you, if you press a button, you skip the audio log, so make sure you don't press wow. any buttons by mistake. Okay, I, I don't know how happened. it is. Sorry, go ahead. I love, I love it if that happened, though. While you were listening to the audio log, you're vulnerable to all enemies, and they just shoot you while you're listening to it. I don't know how it is in Bioshock, but uh, in Phantom Pain, uh, they go full for, and you can actually literally rewind as uh, with the actual tape... Uh, the actual cassette well, tape can... player that you're using, you can actually rewind and move back forward again as you. Uh... Well, in Infinite, when well, Bioshock Infinite, at least, I mean, I don't know if you get subtitles during the audio logs there, either. At least not in the versions I've played, but you at least don't have to go to um... a, me a boring menu. Yeah, you can actually play the game while listening. Yeah, so... I, I always just, I always just stop. I always just. Pause a little bit, you know, it's just stopping my tracks. So oh, hold well, on, let me explain this. This is the timeline menu. What is the timeline menu? It's basically the level select of the game. You can always go back to a previous episode, junction, or uh, act, and just either start the game back from there and make some different choices so you can see for yourself how different choices that was look. giving me That was giving me Beyond Two Souls level of flashback. I guess to be fair, unlike Game of Souls, you don't have to start from the beginning every time you want to try a different route here and there. Yeah. So again, that's actually something that's nice. That, that that's just oh. the foul Java is the thing. For every step forward, it makes like free backward. It's one of those things. That's like I'll, pl I'd rather, I'd rather play the Beyond Two Souls over this because Beyond Two. Look at me, Beyond Two Souls is terrible, but Beyond Two Souls. I still think Beyond Two Souls was more entertaining than this, honestly, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it really depends. I mean, well, I mean, this game is definitely more innovative than Beyond Two Souls. The problem oh, I'm talking is about that... the story specifically, though. Oh, yeah. well, I was, well, I was comparing the two games. Sure, I understand. Okay, let, let's talk about what? story specifically, though. Why was there a graffiti of them, um, whatever? Okay, okay, okay. Story-wise, this is really a tough one, because, okay, yeah, when it comes to antagonists, I'd say that this game does it better with Paul, but when it comes to, uh, say, having an overall interest in the plot, well, that's tough for me. Again, I'll admit, I actually like the characters in this game better than that of Beyond Two Souls. The problem is what the story actually Hold on, Joe, I'm, I'm gonna have to explain this. Aside from time traveling combat, you can also uh, you're gonna have to do a little bit of light puzzle solving. The problem is that the puzzle solving in this game is very minimal. Like there's only like a total of like four puzzles in this game. You you could have you could have used this more because the combat is just your generic cover based shooter with time travel powers. So honestly, more puzzles like these. And by the way, also make them a little harder because. But to be fair, this is the first one in the game, so um, I'm, uh, this is typical. This is kind of a tutorial so the puzzle. Called get, so the objective's called get out of area, but the little bit underneath says get into area. <laughs> make up your mind. Don't we get in or out? So yeah, wow. basically, what you have to do is you have to consistently rewind. Um, Okay, see, there you go. I basically, since I shot the thing, it, it fell. However, I can use my time powers to rewind. And once again, like I've said, like we've said in part, of, like we said in part two, the the time travel powers are incredibly situational, and you cannot experiment with them. Uh, again, it's like, it's, like I said, it's like I said in the last part. I wish we could have just had the ability to make one of the two people pointing guns at each other shoot themselves or yeah. something. Believe but, it or not, Dwivs, that's what Ghost Trick is for. I don't yeah. know if I've said that a lot, but yeah, a lot of what this game does and tries to do has been done better on a Nintendo DS handheld made but made in 2010 called Ghost Trick. I thought it was 2008, or am I getting... No, 2010. It was uh, the game that uh, Chutakumi made after Trials and Tribulations and before the crossover. Like, seriously. I mean, Ghost Trick is like a dream. I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean, like, okay, obviously you have to do some things during the action scenes the way that you're supposed to, but, it, not a, 
But to be fair, that's actually part of the challenge and fun. Not to mention, you can actually try stuff, and you do actually get, say, uh, different funny endings if you mess up in a certain way. Not only that, but when you're not doing the action oh, scenes, you actually... Okay, so now you rewind this, and now you have a platform to ju platforms to jump on. Whoa. Yeah, that's, there yeah, you that's go. also a thing similar to Ghost Trick. It's there like you go. That, this is the platforming of the game. Enjoy. Wow. Great ending. And people anyway. say that uh, platformers are dead. <laughs> huh. Why would a platform game be without platforms? Going back to the... Going back to the to yeah, the previous ahead, to the previous thing that me and Jova were talking about, uh, is, is, that's just a thing to me, Jova. Um, Beyond Two Souls is way cheesier and is way more insane and therefore much more easy to to make fun of. Whereas this game is just so by the numbers and boring okay, yeah. and feels like it feels like it feels so much like one of those really boring bad sci-fi channel movies. Go ahead. That I can agree with. So basically it comes to this. Do you prefer a story with better characters, some more depth to them, but with a sadly bland and by the numbers plot, which actually kind of looks even more creatively bankrupt than most time travel stories? Or would you go for the story with way worse characters, ones that spin in your face, but actually has a lot more funnier scenes and more riffing value? Yeah. This game, really this game isn't even... Poison. Yeah, this game isn't even fun to make fun of it's just boring i think yeah, yeah yeah again it goes back to what i said earlier the problem with this game is like well yeah we make fun of it a lot but there was actually a lot of good ideas i mean heck this is one of the few triple a games that actually had the idea to give youtube recorders the oh, ability look, a mustache. To to... <laughs> uh, um okay so is you want to you want to know what but you want to know what banana mustache is doing during these parts? Just read the swell text. So is this important or shall uh, I go no, on? No, uh, no, I don't care. So I'm just gonna move on. Anyway, but yeah, um, you know, again, this is a this is one of the few. In fact, I think the only AAA game I've seen that actually gives recorders the option to turn off licensed music to avoid the copyright yeah. stick that comes with it. Yeah, it's like. And the sad thing is that a lot of the good ideas that you don't see in a lot of AAA games, sadly, it had to be this game. The problem is that uh, later on, they're going to make a little joke that centers around a specific licensed song. And since I have the copyright music disabled, it's going to be silent. So the joke is not going to make any Wait. sense. Basically, oh, wow. they make ba a four-fold joke. No, it's not that joke. But basically. Later on, Jack is going to be with Beth in a car, and since it's Beth's car, she gets to pick which music is played, right? So she plays okay. one of the licensed songs, and uh, she plays a licensed song, uh, and then she turns to the others, and the others apparently don't like the song, and she's like, "My car, my 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 tune." Uh, can you hold on, Des? I'm talking, Des. Hold on, and and right and so it's supposed to be a little joke of, "Oh, I play my song, bitches." The problem is that since the, I have the copyright music disabled, we don't actually hear anything, so the joke. Does it work? And the scene is nonsensical as a result of it. <laughs> but go ahead, Webs. Can you just edit in a non-copyrighted song, like a Groove theme from Skyward Sword? I could, <laughs> I could. That w I could, Webs. But I wanted to demonstrate. But I wanted to demonstrate the downside of disabling the copyright music. What I don't True. get is, you know, this. You know, companies. Why do you even bother including these copyrighted music tracks? Or at least, why don't you make a contract that allows uh, showing off a copyrighted soundtrack? I mean, it seems a bit counterproductive. I mean, YouTube is one of the best ways that people share your games via social media. But if you have a copyrighted music and const that constantly gets the videos taken down, well, maybe there needs to be some change made to that. Yeah. In the meantime, we're doing more cover-based shooting action. And hey, hey, actual cover moves. Forbidding. Pew, pew, pew. But, yeah, okay. Going back to what I was saying about Ghost Trick's gameplay. See, the difference between this and Ghost Trick is that when you're not in one of the action story sequences in Ghost Trick, you actually have the ability to mess around with stuff in yeah. the overworld. And you can even get reactions from people every now and then, too. Like, you know, Ghost Trick actually remembers, hey, people want to actually use these powers in ways that aren't contrived. Like, 
You know, I have to say, I'm impressed at how Ghost Trick manages to give the player so many abilities and yet keep them from being OP. Well, yeah, that game basically pushes the DS to its limit. Well, I was talking story-wise. Like, they're clever enough to actually oh, give the player that many abilities that involve time travel and yet not be OP. True. Heck, it's actually a good time travel plot, I'd say. It is. Anyway... <laughs> Uh, it's just what uh, it, 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 that's just the sad part, Dwebs. The the um the the one big gimmick of of the bat of the combat in Uncharted Four is of course the rope. Uh, but it's incredibly fun to use. And this game, on the other hand, has multiple time travel powers that can be used during fights. And yet somehow, with more tools in the in the shed, it still doesn't manage to be nowhere near as fun as Uncharted Four. So I, so. Yeah, like uh, another demonstration of uh, more isn't necessarily better. Slow. Oh, <laughs> oh, isn't that cute? They're trying to. That's be for Will. Wait, wait. That's for Will. You are aware that Paul was the one that killed Will, right? Yeah, I mean, for all you know, that guy was just an innocent guy who was doing his job. Maybe he thought he was the Paul in disguise. I, I mean, I, I get, I get that uh, those are Paul's troops. I get that. But they're still technically innocent in the matter. They didn't have anything to do with Will's murder. Oh, but Pedro, it's not like any of them might possibly be good. Oh, wait, that's right. We're dedicating the TV episodes to Liam, who's apparently good and under Paul's team. So, okay, so imagine if that was Liam he shot and said, that's for Will. Don't worry, Joe, but we're, we're saving that for the climax. Oh, goody. Well, okay, either way, though, again, it's like, that was stupid. It was. So yeah, there's well, nothing here. I, I hey, guess. here's an idea. Why don't you rewind it so that you can, so that you can send it to a particular time when it was working properly. So exactly. You know, you, yeah. You've been able to do that before. Angry Joe voiced that complaint pretty much like, uh, uh, instead of just using the time travel to uh, to for the, for the sake of your convenience, no, you can only use it. Like for example, there's going to be points in this game where we can use time travel to rewind the door back to a time when it was open. Why can't? Uh, so, but it, but it, we can only do it to that specific door, to the specific doors that the game wants us to use it in. This game shares a similar problem with Knack, but somehow manages to do it even worse. See, with Knack again, it's how you can assimilate certain objects only when the game deems oh you can assimilate these elements now. Here, this game literally gives you power off. after off. As in awful? What? Yeah, I agree. Face off. What uh, the a W F. Uh, hey, hey, Sam, you forgot the U and the L. There you go. Awful. Punctuation, you Sam. Go. Punctuation. <laughs> uh, it's interesting you're comparing the two, Joa, because yeah. remember, both Knack and this game were announced in in the same conference where each console was re was revealed. This game was first announced in the Xbox okay. One reveal conference. Knack was first announced in the PS4 reveal conference. So that's kind of well, interesting. I guess, um, supposed to be an like Xbox maybe, One launch title. Yes, maybe. Uh, maybe Sam. Well, because Sam wakes from Finland. Um, maybe there's language issues. I don't know. Phone waves. You're telling me that on a. You're telling me that on a Microsoft-funded game, there was not a single bout of Americans to, you know, help out with that? Yeah, well, well the, I think the I think a couple of the writers were were American, but the rest were all based in. Um, it's not even just remedies, that. Remedies, remedies, remedies place in um, in Finland. It's not even okay. just that. Dwebs and Jova. Sam Lake no. can perfectly speak English. I've seen him speak English in conferences. He can. He's fine. Yeah. I mean, so I don't know what. So I don't think that would be a problem at all. If he can speak English, I'm sure he can write too. In English, I mean. So I don't By think that way, would be. I don't think that would be a problem. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Are we ever going to actually establish what happened to um, the Paul that Jack knew? Like, well, do we actually get to visually see his development no. into the Paul who's a villain. We kind of see it before when he was walking into the tunnel, but... Yeah, but the game cuts off after well, that. that. Was, well, that was just talking about his motivation, and we're... And honestly, Tio, we don't even really see what he saw. He just said, I saw the end of the world, and uh, then, that's it. He was evil. Jova, 
it's probably not a good time to tell you that we're never going to learn what did he actually see that made him turn oh, evil, I right? Did. So, they're, so they're trying to pull the briefcase from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Isn't that cute? It's heavy, it's not charming in this life. Not just, it's a, it's, yeah, that, 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 that one thing that Paul saw is the very reason why there's even a plot and we never know what the hell it is. You know, you know, I know a lot of people sometimes praise stuff like the briefcase in Pulp Fiction for being vague, you know, leaving stuff up. Hey, I've always took that as more of a joke that. rather than more than anything, but sure, go ahead. Well, yeah, believe please, it or not, sir. Sorry. Well, believe it or not, Pedro, there are some people who actually take that kind of stuff seriously as eh. opposed to a joke, saying, oh, Internet. it's bold, big, it's storytelling. Bold. It's bold, artistic, stylistic. Uh, I mean, a wicked we're... sense of humor. Whereas, yeah, I agree with you. That was more of a joke in Pulp Fiction, but now people have said, oh, but don't you see, it's actually a masterful writing trope that <laughs> is uh, supposedly great. Well, well, well while you talk, rem remember, Jova, there's a guy out there who thinks that Fairy Fence or F is a deep exploration of human relationships. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My problem is that them doing this seems to be people taking that stuff seriously, only these are supposed to be the professionals. Like, okay, you saw the end of the world. Show us what the end of the world is like. Yeah, even, even, actually, there you go. The comparison again, Jova. Even Beyond Two Souls showed us uh, the end of the world. Briefly, oh, yes, exactly, but it still right. showed us. But it still showed us, showed it to us. <laughs> yeah. Like, heck, bro. Yeah, yeah, done by David Cage. That's, that's. Congratulations. Um, Congratulations, like, Sam. Now think about what you've done. Narration. Ding. So, a bit too late for that, so, you know, Jack, your brother's dead, I guess, but uh, here's an idea. Why don't you go to his corpse, time warp it into him being alive, and then save his life by warning him about what's to happen if you can't actually bring him in the present? Oh, wait, no, he might actually be there alive because the, you can. That's just the problem, Jova. Stuff. That's just the problem, Jova. If he uses time powers effectively, then there wouldn't be no story, so. Like, seriously, you know, there are plenty of time travel stories that have been able to do stuff like this and, you know, still have about a suspense. So, yeah, since I did, since um, since Amy survived uh, episode one, we get to actually save her here. Obviously, if we had picked Hardline back at the previous junction, she wouldn't be here. However, here's what happens, by the way, in case you're wondering, if we don't save Amy... It's not her who helps us. It's a random monarch um, janitor of I... sorts. A janitor. Uh, okay, 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 not, okay. He's not. I don't know which particular. I remember. I don't I forgot which specific function he served at the company. But it's just a random monarch, em, generic monarch employee, basically. So basically, really? Teo, this is your choice. Uh, more uh, a, a better defined character versus a generic character. Mm. That's... Hmm. You know, that's kind of a shame because, you know, a smart game developer would have either had things go about the same way but in a more clever way or actually just have a completely different route of stuff. Like, you know, maybe Jack actually has to infiltrate the company and actually... Oh, goody, a laptop. Them. Let's see what's in it. No, please. Uh, Paul. Ground zero operation. A email to Sophia Amaral. That's the love interest of his that I mentioned in the previous part. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, uh, to quote know. to quote Angry Joe, this is not inter this is not fun. This is not interesting. Look how many walls of text this game has. It's Final Fantasy fourteen all over again. Actually I dare say in some ways it's even worse than Final Fantasy fourteen. Well, it really depends. Final Fantasy fourteen, yeah. The data log was really, really, Actually, really stupid. Yeah, Jova has a point, because here's the thing, Jova. In Final Fantasy fourteen, you're just automatically given all the data logs as you move through the game. In this game, you have to go out of your way to find the the, the data logs. <laughs> yep. In fact, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Aren't finding all these emails part of some completion bonus or something? Uh, I think you get an achievement for it, and that's basically it. Not worthy. 
I I pity the completionist if he someday reviews this game. Nah, this game is actually, from what I've seen, is actually re uh, really easy to um, to a hundred percent because the game even from what I, I've never played this game in the harder difficulties, but from what I've seen, apparently even the harder difficulties are incredibly easy anyway. So oh, it's I a, get that. so I mean, so it's this game is apparently really easy to. Platinum. I, mean, I I know it's not platinum because it's an Xbox, but you know the you know my, it's it's easy to a hundred percent, including achievements and everything. Yes, from what from what I've seen, I never actually really? try it because I don't care. Um, and I guess you don't really have to necessarily read all those emails so much as just locate them. I, I'm assuming all the uh, uh, okay for the for the sake of fairness to the fans of this game because they are they are out there. Maybe okay. For um, I will concede that maybe a lot of the plots we're complaining about might be written in those walls of text, and they might also be in those dialogues. But that's just the problem, though. I shouldn't have to stop playing the game to read or listen to to a tape just so I can make sense of the story. Yeah, like seriously. I mean, hoping that people who play this game are going to be hungry enough for lore to read all those emails is no, no, that's fine job. it's not lore if it was lore it would be fine but it's not apparently the very motivations of a lot of characters are told in those walls of text because we cannot actually oh. see these characters develop and interact we have to read about them developing and interacting like okay on the one hand i get that show oh, don't tell I, sam yeah definitely go ahead jova He's just like them? Just like who? Phantasm. I wish I was watching B Mask of the Phantasm. Wait, so there have Me been too. other people zooming around in time like Jack has that she's seen? I I wait, wait, wait. It's a time paradox, isn't it? It's actually him from the future doing all that stuff that she's seen, and that's why she thinks he's just like them. Or is she just talking about the monarch guys with the time suits? Uh, basically, yeah. Uh, remember, she's the, she's the leader of the anti-monarch movement. So, yeah. Why is there even oh, I, I love how it says there. Oh, you're, there you go, Joe. You're supposed to be in awe of how awesome this game is. Be oh. <laughs> There you go. By the way, I may have forgotten, but why exactly is there an anti-monarch movement? Like, what, are they doing something the environment? Because evil corporation. Because, yeah, mo no. because they think monarch is an evil corporation that's bad for the environment or some shit it's like that. It's kind of a satire to the anonymous uh, against the megacorps in general. The problem is that they don't really give us a reason for this. I mean, you know, I mean, as cliche as it is, it's good to include a reason, parody or not. In fact, having a reason can help the parody, especially if it's off of something that's petty. Yeah. Operation Zone Security Level SC4. Hey, uh, Jack. Uh, you know that ability you have of rewinding objects in time? You might want to try that. So, no? you know... So, you know, this would make sense if, like, oh, if it affected time around him as well, then I could maybe see that being a problem. But no, he could clearly choose to focus on one And the guy. sad thing is that we could just, it would have seemed bad, but I could have justified very easily by saying, oh, time can, can afflict only specific zones and I cannot use my power everywhere if I stated in game stuff like bullshit. like, oh, uh, I can only affect power, uh, objects that have a high power of chronon concentration. Actually, like that's that. basically what the specific remember, Teo. Uh, in part, I think it was part two. Yeah, part two. In part two, when he wasn't able to unfreeze Amy and yet he was still unable to unfreeze uh, William, William specifically said, it might have to do with chronon exposure. So I mean, it's it will be like, for example, when in Portal you cannot use the portals on non-powder moon surfaces. Uh, that just comes across to me as a, a lame excuse for why we can't true, use. True, but at least there will still be there instead of just no, you cannot do anything. Mm. Or you know, if there actually is a problem, show that there's a problem with him doing it that particular. Like, like, okay, you know, I'm gonna compare this to Bioshock Infinite. Without spoiling, one of the characters has this ability that allows you to go to different dimensions of something. So basically, said character uses this ability to, you know, make stuff easier for them. The problem is that while that universe has pretty much the deal that they're trying to fulfill already fulfilled, uh, let's just say uh, people are gunning after them in that universe, so while they make one thing easier for them, there's actually a detriment to it. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I'm so you haven't played Bioshock Infinite yet, so I don't want to. No, play. no, Bioshock is not really my thing. Run. Two yeah, and Dwebs probably know what I'm talking well, about. Well, shit, this fell, which means we have to go back and rewind time, so we can, yeah. Why do we have to go back here and rewind? Why don't we rewind the platform that we were on when it fell? Uh, <laughs> uh, because, uh, even uh, even better question, Jova. Why can't we just rewind the door? Even another better question: Why can't we just play a different game? Sorry, Teo. Commentary. Sorry, Teo. Oh Somebody. Oh my God. Sorry, Teo. This game is gonna be forgotten. Uh, it's basically being forgotten. Remember, it's sold horribly. So it's all for the better that we have at least I, someone. I actually wonder if Microsoft one day will ever bother trying to do their own crossover within their IPs. If they will remember this one as well. So let me get this straight. You actually can lift the platforms, but you can't lift them while you're on top of them to make your job easier. No, Jova. That would that would mean that you can actually that a person who's clever and actually experiments would be rewarded, and we can't have that. Sorry, Jova. <laughs> well, oh my oh, God! Oh, yeah, the, the, oh, yeah. Thank you. That was a great way. Notice how I wasn't able to climb, and now I'm. That's because the it wasn't painted yellow. The climbing system in this game fucking sucks. Okay, isn't Dart wasn't Dartigan that said that you can uh, that there is a guy painting all the ledges like with a coloring? Yeah, for you to it climb. was. It's a okay. Um, in the Uncharted games, the climbing system allows us to pretty much climb on literally anything as long as Nate can reach it. But in this game, you can only climb the specific spots that the developers intended for you to climb. Holy Go a bit before, Pedro. Even Shadow of the Colossus allowed you to do yeah. that uh, at the cost well, of Shadow, climbing. Well that, was a, well, that game was built entirely about doing that anyway. Well, hey, hey, Sonic Lost World lets you do the parkour on pretty much any surface, even ones that weren't intended for that. That's a game on the Wii U that was released in 2013. You're telling me that a... It's a climbing well, system. For Uncharted... Uh, Jova, Jova, we can even go further than that. Uncharted 1... One? Uncharted 1, uh, which came out on the PS3 in 2007, had a climbing system that you could climb on pretty much everything. So what's this game's excuse? Good lord, uh, this game... Uh, look at the pretty bunny. I don't even... Yeah. Like... See you for the next part, everybody. All right. Yeah. See you.